people. The step up to the running board proved a bit tough for some of the elderly residents. <laughs> Today, Misho has hundreds of buses which not only transport many of the students of the greater area, Salem area, but also uh, take persons on uh, up to a month-long vacation to the West Coast, Gulf Coast, and Canada. All this from this small beginning. Uh -huh. Yeah, that fire of 1914, that was some, oh, yeah. some deal. And, it sure uh, was. A lot of folks uh, had to remove themselves from the Salem mm -hmm. area, including my grandparents who came over here to Beverly to live. Took out about a third of the city, I believe. Yes. Yes, but this is interesting to me to, to learn the, the origins of the of company. This is probably one of the oldest bus companies of its kind. Oh, it is. In existence today, mm -hmm. I would say. Yes. Michard Bus Company. Well, favorite picture here uh, of mine, although we know little about it, Rich, but this looks com comes right out of the Beverly Hillbilly <laughs> collection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is uh, dated 1919, and it was a bus that was used between uh, Danvers and Salem. But it's typical of anything that was running uh, in that era uh, just after World War I. And again, it's sort of, it's sort of a cross between an old Model T chassis and, and uh, a, a truck and uh, an omnibus or you name it. It's all sort of all cobbled together and made up into this <laughs> conveyance, which was known as a jitney. Yeah. And uh, this one obviously is, is at the end of its useful career. I should say. Uh, judging by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably being used for parts for something else, and yeah. I don't know just where that was taken. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's being stored, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and we can see another another kind something of a, in the background, a buggy there. or something there yep. in the background. Yep. Well, nice nice picture. Yes. Okay, we're moving now to uh, 1922. Mm-hmm. 1922. And this picture and a couple of others that we have in, in the series tonight uh, actually depict buses of the uh, Boston Elevated Railway simply because we didn't have pictures of buses on the uh, Eastern Massachusetts Street Railway system uh, dating to this particular period. But these, again, are pretty generic types of buses uh, for the period. And this picture was taken in 1922. And it still looks a little jitney-ish, sort of like the ones we've been looking at, but it's a little more finished. Now you have uh, real windows and you have uh, no more running boards. They're, they're gone, and the thing is lowered down a little bit on the chassis, so you haven't got to make 12 steps to get up into it. And so it's a little bit more along the, the lines of what buses were later to become. Mm -hmm. And as you say, 1922. 1922. So we, we can peg this time then uh, as a transition period, mm -hmm. perhaps for, as the buses begin to change in right. their appearance. Right. And you keep in mind that at this point, streetcars were still very popular, the yeah. electric streetcars. They were really in their heyday. That's right. Streetcars. That's right. So the buses at this point were on the fringe, and they served areas that there were no tracks to. Yeah. Okay. We're moving next to uh, 1925. <coughs> Um, photograph, Richard. Mm -hmm. This now is an Eastern Mass Street Railway uh, Company bus. This is a safety coach. That was the name of the company that, that built this particular unit. And you'll notice here that the profile is a lot lower down. They've lowered the center of gravity. Uh, the wheels are quite large in diameter and uh, have uh, pneumatic tires so that the ride must be a lot better than these old hard rubber tired things we've been looking at so far. And if you look inside, you can see that the seats are big, heavy, upholstered leather. And uh, it was quite a step forward by the mid-20s, and, and comfort had become uh, a lot better than it had been uh, uh -huh. in the earlier uh, vehicles. Uh -huh. well, I see they're pretty proud to put on the front end the safety coach. The safety coach, sure. <laughs> I don't know what that meant about other, other vehicles, but in any, in any case, this was supposed to be, uh, you know, the, the state of the art. Yeah. Uh, f before we go further, I don't know we're going to talk a little later on about this, but uh, tell us just quickly about the Eastern Mass um, line. Was this the, the originator of the, the bus? Well, it pretty much, yeah, the Eastern Mass took over from the uh, bankrupt Bay State Street Railway in 1919 okay. and was an amalgamation of, of all the prior street railway lines in the entire Eastern Massachusetts area, going all the way down to Connecticut and Rhode Island in the south and all the way up to New Hampshire and Maine on, in the north, and out as far as, uh, well, the western suburbs, certainly, of Boston. Yeah. And they were to stay as such for many, many years. Many years until the, uh, actually, until the advent of the uh, Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority mm -hmm. in 1968. Okay. Well, next we have a nice, uh, as I've noted here, a flapper picture. Mm -hmm. 
1927. Right, and again, this is Boston Elevated Railway, and it's in Boston, but this could easily be uh, Eastern Mass at the time because uh, Eastern Mass Street Railway would have had vehicles like this. And it just depicts um, people getting on the bus in the morning. Uh, the gentleman is, is being exactly uh, a gentleman, standing aside to let the ladies board first. And as you point out, they're in their, in their flapper outfits with their cloche hats and uh, the, uh, uh. The, the fur coats and so forth of that era. Yeah. Are there glass windows here, Rich? It's yes. kind of hard to tell. Yeah, that would be floor. glass windows. Uh huh. Okay, so they're all enclosed and mm -hmm. relatively snug. Relatively snug. I don't know how the heaters were in these, but I'm sure they had some rudimentary type of heat in these uh -huh. vehicles. Uh huh. Okay, 1927. 27. Well, this next one is dated 1926, same period <coughs> of time, Eastern Mass. Mm -hmm. This, again, uh, would be uh, an actual Eastern Mass Street Railway bus. Uh, this is a yellow coach, not that it was colored yellow, but it was built by a company called the Yellow Coach Company and uh, seated 21 people. And uh, this particular picture was taken in Quincy, Massachusetts, but again, this could have been anywhere uh, on the Eastern Mass Street Railway system. Yeah. Likely to come through Beverly, sure. Salem, Peabody, mm -hmm. any? It would have been used anywhere in the system that they were not using streetcars. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have next a 1934 picture, um, model H95, I see in the notes here. Mm -hmm. This is uh, an ACF uh, bus, uh, ACF standing for American Car and Foundry. Now, American Car and Foundry built railroad cars, and they were also into the, into the business of making buses as the bus um, era began to take off. And this type of bus was actually in use on the streets around here probably well into the 1940s. I actually remember seeing something like this when I was very young. Uh -huh. This picture particularly is interesting because it was taken at Lynn uh, in front of the old trolley barns, and you can see that the trolleys are still in use as this picture was being taken because there's a trolley in the barn uh, in the right of the photo. You can see the rails. You can see the wires overhead. Yeah. So this was all, uh, you know, taking place, uh, you know, side by side at that particular time. Yeah, the trolleys would have another th good three years mm -hmm. to run, at right. least through the Beverly uh, area. Right. And I, I suspect uh, in, in most areas mm -hmm. they ran until the late 30s. Right. But these, these barns were interesting, uh, Rich, because uh, prior to the car barns, of course, they would have to have horse barns right. to take care of the animals mm -hmm. that pull the the uh, truck uh, wagons stables, along. Yep. Mm -hmm. They had stables for and, the horses. And uh, a few of these barns are still around as buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. We have pictures uh, of the Mason Street uh, mm -hmm. barn. Yep. We've shown in an earlier program, mm -hmm. and there's one down in Essex that there's we've one in Essex. We've documented, mm -hmm. and uh, th th they still are around. Oh yes. In in other capacities, mm -hmm. but. Uh, a reminder of the good old days. That's right. I, in fact, I believe the MBTA still uses the, the West Lynn uh, car barns for their present bus uh, terminal over uh -huh. there. Yep. Yeah. Well, okay, let's go the, to our next picture. And here we come to a color mm -hmm. photograph, which is always nice to have in, in the collection. Mm -hmm. uh, Government Center in Boston, uh, this picture was taken, but actually it goes back to 34. Right. This is like the, the bus we just looked at. It's a um, um, ACF uh, model, and it's um, taken actually in February of 1972 at Government Center uh, for a, a particular uh, celebration there of opening the, the new terminal. However, uh, the bus at this point is now um, owned by the Seashore Trolley Museum in Kennebunkport, Maine, and it was borrowed and brought down to Boston as, as an exhibit uh, to stand next to the, the brand new buses of the period. And again, this would have been after the takeover by the uh, MBTA. Yeah. But uh, it's nice in that it's a color photo. You can see what, what the colors of these vehicles used to be, yeah. because most pictures we have of them are, are strictly black and white. Isn't it wonderful to have these preserved? Oh, the, the yeah. People that take the time and the mm -hmm. effort, the great effort and expense mm -hmm. to, to preserve these vehicles from right. the olden days. Right. Actually, this picture here is of the same bus that we have on the table in front of us here in this uh, horizontal picture to the right of this fare box here. Okay. That's the, the vehicle that's actually preserved at Seashore Trolley uh -huh. Museum. Very good. Now, we have kind of a map area of the um, Eastern Mass route, mm -hmm. much similar to the uh, uh, routes that the uh, trolley system mm -hmm. uh, took mm -hmm. uh, in their day. Mm -hmm. um, and what would this be, in the 30s? This would be in the 30s, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, 
basically what it what it shows you and it's 1937 I believe when it was actually published okay. it shows you both the the bus lines and the few remaining uh, car lines the streetcar lines which were still in use and uh, it shows that it ran all the way from Fall River uh, in the south and then a connection down to Providence Rhode Island and all the way up through to Haverhill and Newburyport uh, just below the uh, the line into New Hampshire and of course all the way out to Lowell and uh, lines out to uh, Dedham and, and Walpole and so forth uh, in the west. And we'll, we have a, a, a poster coming up here mm -hmm. in a minute but uh, they had a big uh, uh, deal going on in those days to ride all day for a dollar? That's right, that's right. They were pushing that very heavily and again that was because by the 1930s the automobile had made such inroads into uh, transit that they would do almost anything to, to get you to get out of your car Huh. And if you could get on a bus or a streetcar and, and uh, for spending a dollar travel all over the system, essentially, yeah. uh, it was a really good deal. Good deal, for sure. Yeah. Okay, 1930. Um, and uh, I believe, are we in Beverly now, Rich? Or? Uh, no, this is, again, a, a bus that, that would have been used, uh, certainly in the Beverly area. We have pictures of this type of bus uh, in Beverly. Uh, mm -hmm. This was, again, a twin coach. Uh, not that there were two of them, but it was the twin coach company that built these uh, particular buses. This is a Model 40, and uh, this was built in 1930. had 36 seats, so you're, you're increasing your capacity all the time. Yep. And uh, this particular unit, uh, the Eastern Mass, had purchased secondhand from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, these twin coach uh, vehicles were, were quite uh, uh, easy to identify because they looked almost the same from the front or the back, sort of like a Studebaker automobile from the 40s. You yes. didn't know which way they were going. Right. Uh, they had these visors over the windshield and over the rear window. And uh, the only way you could really tell is they had these sort of frog-like headlights on the front that kind of protruded <laughs> out and yeah. gave them a real unusual look. Yeah. And it would seem that the engine is amidships uh, behind that vent grill uh, in back of the front wheels. Yeah. So you're obviously sitting over the engine, which must have been hotter than the Dickens mm -hmm. in the summer. Tell, tell us about the, the two-door uh, aspect of, of mm -hmm. the bus here now. Would they, uh, people boarding and exiting, would, would both uh, doors be available for well, that? Not purpose? always. Uh, theoretically, you, you boarded in the front because that's where the, the fare box, which we have mm -hmm. one here, uh, that would have been located next to the driver. But you could exit from the rear, uh, I suppose, in certain situations to, to cut down the congestion of people getting on and getting off. Yeah. But there was a careful system of the bus driver knew mm -hmm. who was on oh, yeah. and paid oh, yeah. and uh, was riding. Absolutely, they, they because of course at this point there was no such thing as a conductor like they used to have on the streetcars. Yeah who was in charge of collecting the fares. Yeah. Remember those fellows that drove the buses, Rich, how, how neat they looked. They had that uniform, mm -hmm. the hat, and, yep. the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the shirt, and mm -hmm. the pants. Uh, it all matched, and a badge, of course. Yep. And they looked so uh, brisk. And, it was uh, almost military. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And you'd board the bus, and, and uh, you'd put your nickel into the Mm -hmm. into the slot there and you can, I can still hear that sound today. Yep, that kerklunk sound and that whirring as it ate the money and, and turned the little numbers on the meter, yeah? Yeah. And, the, and as you said earlier, the, the driver would have his little change maker on his belt. Yes. He'd click that and those right. quarters and nickels would come out and he could make change for a dollar or whatever. Right. And at the same time he's driving and he's making change and he's talking about the Red Sox. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about ambidextrous. And standing down in Ellis Square. Mm -hmm. on the uh, Essex Street side of, of the square, uh, just waiting for that bus to come around the corner. Right. And pull up there to That's heading right. for Salem. That's right. That was a, those were the old days, mm -hmm. I guess. Well, okay, let's get right <clears throat> on here. 1934, next picture. And uh, again, a again, slightly different yes. model. Yeah, like, uh, again, uh, it's a twin coach, but it's a little bit more streamlined than the one we just looked at. They've gotten rid of the uh, visors over the windshield and the rear end, and uh, they've gotten rid of the, those awful uh, frog lights that were sticking way out in the front. And this is more streamlined. The, the back sort of flares down into a, into a fancy taper at the bottom, and uh, the wheel wells are kind of fared out with sort of a streamlined fender. And uh, all in all, it's getting more aerodynamic. So yeah. again, this by 1934 uh, was the evolution of where buses had come from the real square boxy look to a more aerodynamic Art Deco look. Yeah. Seems like each decade beginning with the early period mm -hmm. 
they changed. Mm -hmm. Every 10 years, there mm -hmm. was a change in the, sure. in the appearance of them. Plus, there were a number of companies making them, which you don't have today. Today, there's only a few companies that even make buses. Yeah. And back then, you had you know, literally a dozen or more. Right. Now, we come to this uh, fine poster that I was uh, referring to earlier. Mm -hmm. And what do we have, Rich? This is a lovely uh, color uh, brochure which opens out into a poster size uh, piece and uh, as we look at it uh, we can see lots of things. Again they're pushing heavily the ride all day for a dollar uh, angle which you see here um, in, the, in the left panels and at the bottom of the extreme left side it, it runs down a whole bunch of, of towns in, in the area which you could travel to all for a dollar all in a day. 20 cities and 51 towns. So you had quite a quite an area that you could cover for a dollar. I mean, mm -hmm. goodness, you couldn't beat that with a stick. And the other side of the brochure, uh, looking on the right side, smooth, clean, and safe. Uh, again, the, the uh, luxurious interior of these buses with the leather seats and uh, the standee uh, hangers there, of course, showing, and uh, the ventilation ports from the, the cool, fresh air that would come in from outside. Yeah. And all this was made to get you out of your, your cramped, confined little automobile and uh, get you in this luxurious bus and let you uh, travel around the area. Kind of made you feel like a king or a queen. Oh, sure. As, yeah. you, as you went off for, for a dollar. It's a far cry from today <laughs> with the buses with the fiberglass seats and, and yeah. uh, you know, Shanks Mare. <laughs> yeah.